of that way up in uh, on the boulder up there. Amen. And uh, what a what a what a joy to be in this district again, and to finally make it to Gillette. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. And what a beautiful, beautiful edifice that you have. Somebody's been doing a lot of work, and uh, it looks brand new, brother, but I know that uh, you have done a lot of remodeling, and uh, thank God for that. That shows love and concern, and uh, thank God for a, a great pastor that has the heart of a pastor. Aren't you glad for a good pastor? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we thank you. We thank you, church, for, for your, your following his lead, guiding uh, you to, to have a heart for missions. Missions begins, doesn't begin overseas. It begins right next door. Amen. And, and uh, so while you're looking overseas, don't forget to look next door because <laughs> that's, that's where it is. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want my wife to come and, and uh, just share what's on her heart. Thank God for this lady. Now, I, I was, I was kind of like Adam. You know, after God made everything, uh, every, every creation day, you know, he stepped back and he looked at it and said, that's good. And the first time he said something wasn't good that he made was after he made Adam. He stepped back and looked and he said, not good. He said that man should be alone. <laughs> I, I don't know the condition of that garden by then and how many days it took it to get a mess, but God said, this boy needs help. <laughs> and thank God. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he looked at me and said. <laughs> Amen, and I'm glad for, for this lady that, that he put at my side close to 43 years ago. And uh, she's been a, been a trooper working in the work of the Lord, raising our three children as well. And, and I just thank God, thank God for her. Praise God. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. It was wonderful to walk in and to walk into the prayer meeting and feel the power of God. When we lift him up in praise, He's there, he inhabits the praises of his people. And the old tormentor has to run, amen. The tormentor of our soul, he, he's scared of that. So that's our, that's our biggest weapon, I think, is praise. And um, I was thinking as we were singing that it was just so beautiful, the music, the praise music tonight. But as we were singing that song, our God is higher. Our God is greater than any other. You know, our God says there, besides him, there is no other. But I was thinking about so many times, you know, overseas, we were missionary evangelists, and my husband might tell you a little bit about what we did before. We've been missionaries since 1986, so. Um, well, in 1986, we were appointed to the, to the tiny country of El Salvador. It was a war-torn country, and it was a, it was a, a challenge in many ways because we saw a lot of death. We saw we were held at gunpoint a lot of times. Bullets even came through our house, and army ta uh, army tanks surrounded our house. So it was a time that uh, we really trusted God, but it was so worth it because of all the, the harvest. My husband felt a burden to start churches with a, just he started a home missions department in El Salvador, and two churches had donated tents from the U.S. that we took down in a bus and in a big truck. And we took those tents down and um, used those to start new churches. We would target places, and he had a team of men, of pastors and Bible school students, and they would go and uh, target a city that needed a church, and they'd go in and teach Bible studies for three months. And at the end of three months, we would put the tent up, and just, you know, they, they liked their music loud. So I think you could hear it about a mile away Every, you know, every church that we would drive by was empty and everybody was at the tent. And at the end of two weeks of services, every night, usually we had between 20 and 40 filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know, at the birth of those churches was not always easy. Sometimes they were attacked by the enemy, by the guerrillas. And um, 
our people didn't lose their lives, but some of the soldiers did in some of the fights over where we were located sometimes. But, you know, in those three years, we were able to raise up 42 churches for the name of Jesus. And those churches have had daughter works. And, and the church is just, it just keeps growing. And then in, in 92, we were um, named to the country of Guatemala, which is right next door. And during that time, my husband just taught how to evangelize, how to, he started the night classes for Bible school so that everyone could go to Bible school. Even if they didn't, uh, they couldn't quit their jobs, you know, and go move somewhere and go to Bible school. But we started them in churches and there were night classes. And, and um, he taught the pastors how to evangelize their city. And first he told them to go to their cities and to witness to every single pastor in the city and explain the way to God more, to them more perfectly. And if they wouldn't receive it, then you could talk to their members. But before that, when they started doing that, we started seeing an average of one church every month converted, being baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, our churches are just not big enough to hold what God really wants to do. We have to get out of the box sometimes and think in a little bit unconventional manners. But God is doing great things around the world right now. And I am. And it, it's nice to know that we were next door neighbors one time in our life. <laughs> and God, isn't it amazing where God puts you all in different places? It's good to see BJ and his family here tonight. BJ is my husband's sister's son, so he's our nephew. And it's just awesome to see him and his wife and two boys here tonight. I know God's doing a beautiful work in their lives. And I just thank God that we know the one true living God that loves and cares for us. In, in 97, we were appointed as missionary evangelists to be able to take what we've learned and, and, and done in Central America around the world to try to help other people. And uh, sometimes we teach, we do all kinds of things, that, but one of the things that we do sometimes is teaching Bible schools. And we were in the country of Malaysia teaching in Bible school. One of the young men told me, he said, I want, I want to give you my testimony. He said, I was raised a Hindu, and I became a Hindu priest. And he said, I... I worshiped many gods. And he said, what I didn't realize is that I was worshiping demonic spirits. And he said, it left me hopeless. It really left me in despair. He said, I, I, I didn't feel like anyone really loved me, not even my own parents. I was very depressed, he said. And you know, that's, that's the way Satan wants people to worship him. And they do it in many, many ways. Not always in a Hindu temple, but many, many ways. And he likes that, but he leaves their lives totally destroyed because that's his purpose. And he said, I decided one night that I was going to take my life. He said, I walked out into the ocean. And as I walked out, just so sad and so in despair, he said, I heard a voice that said, Ishwara, stop. And he said, I said, which God is this? He said, I named, and I didn't hear an answer. And I said, which God is this? He said, I named off about four gods that I've been praying to. And no answer. And he said, I said, which God is this? He knew it was, the God, was God, a God. He didn't know what God because he never knew about Jesus, really. But he said, I heard a voice that said, I am your God. I am Jesus. And he said he began to weep to think there was really a God somewhere that cared enough for him not to want him to kill himself that he wanted him to live, that he felt a love. He felt hope. And he said, I turned around and I was crying and I went back to the beach and I fell on the beach. And I said, Jesus, I want to know you. Can you forgive me and can you help me? And he said, he started his journey that night. The next day he went looking and he found a church. He went inside and there was a preacher in his side. And he said, can you tell me about Jesus? Could you teach me about the Bible? That's where his search began, and God heard his prayer. God heard Ishwara's prayer. And I don't know what all happened in his life. All I know is that he ended up being filled with the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name, of course, set free from demonic spirits, and a new man with hope, a new man with hope that was studying the Bible so that he could go and preach the same gospel to people just like him. And I really believe that even though we couldn't be where Ishwara was, that when we pray, see, Ishwara and people like him, 
don't have a mom and dad or brother and sister or anybody to pray for them. I believe that when we pray in tongues, our prayers go so far. They go to places that we, we can't imagine with our human minds, but God knows. God uses those prayers to change lives around the world when we're sensitive to him. And when you pray, just push on a little bit further until you pray in tongues because that's when the Spirit is praying through you. You don't know what to pray. You don't know how to feel. You pray in tongues, and God takes care of it. I believe that with all of my heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, so many times when we go overseas, I, we step into places of worship where other people worship their gods. And it's been really some weird things. One of the weirdest was when we lived in Guatemala, we happened upon a, it was really a witch doctor doing his thing and he killed a, a live chicken with his hands and he was doing all these weird things and he, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I think people are pretty mixed up, you know, but they don't know any better. And that's why I thank you people for your love for missions, for sending missionaries and for help, for praying for missionaries because we go into places that aren't very safe a lot of times. And, and I know so many times we look at each other and say, someone's praying. And we know that. We don't take that for granted. God is good and he protects us. But sometimes we go into Muslim countries and sometimes um, we just step into the Buddhist temples or the Muslim mosques, the Hindu shrines to see what people are doing. And they're so empty. They go and sometimes they hit a gong clap their hands to wake their gods up and, and have a little piece of paper, something they need, what they want from their God, and they write on it what they want, put it in a crack, and walk off just as empty as they came in because those gods don't love them. Those gods are figments of their imagination if they're not demonic spirits. We were, we're also in the country of Singapore, and uh, we were in church there with Brother Steve Willoughby, and a lady came and she said, I want to tell you my testimony. She said, I was raised Muslim. And she said, I was rebellious as a teenager. And I told my parents, when I turn 18 and I get out of this house, I am not going to worship Allah. And I'm not wearing all these clothes. She said, because, you, and you know, that can be a death sentence. Over there, that's a death sentence. Uh, parents can legally kill their, parent, their children for, do, for doing that. She said, I told my parents, you know Allah does not love us. The only reason we serve Allah is out of fear of going to hell. She said, he requires so much of us that we don't feel any love. She said, we are too poor to go to Mecca. That's one of his requirements. And uh, she said, when I get out of this house, she said, I'm going to look for the Christian's God because they say he loves them. Aren't you so glad you found the lover of your soul? the one who changes us, the one who is always there, the one who's never mean to us, the one who never rejects us, the one who forgives us and loves us regardless, that agape love that none of us deserve. Our great big God. Our God who has one name that takes care of everything, the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every demon will bow. At the name of Jesus, the sick are healed. At the name of Jesus, he meets every one of our needs. I'm so glad we know him. Praise God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were going to sing a song in Spanish and in English that says praise the Lord. Because as I was saying, I, I love the weapon of praise. Sometimes we get up in the mornings in bad moods because we're human beings, and God understands, I think. But <laughs> I don't know if, he, if when he was a man, if he ever got up in a bad mood or not, but the Bible does say he was tempted in all matters like we were. But he understands. But what he wants us to do about it is not kick the cat, not yell at our husband or wife, but he wants us to praise him because that, when we begin to praise, he changes the whole atmosphere of the house, of the home, of, of the school, of the classroom of where we work, he changes us. And he turns that sorrow into joy. I love him so much, praise God, hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, Lord, thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you, this Jesus. Is, this is an old song, probably new to some of you. 
it's so old. <laughs> but uh, it really does talk about the power of praise and what a weapon it is. Amen. Spanish first. Si te sientes oprimido, que no puedes alabar a Dios. Si te sientes opresionado por las huestes de Satanás. Si te sientes ser tentado y no sabes de dónde ir. Solo dobla tus rodillas y glorifica al Señor. Gloria a Dios En medio de tus problemas Gloria a Dios Porque en Cristo hay poder Gloria a Dios Si te sientes ser atado Es solo para recordarte Que las cadenas ya son rotas Cuando le Now Satan, he is a liar, and he wants to make us think that we are paupers when he knows himself we're children of the king. So lift up the mighty shield of faith, for the battle must be won. For Jesus Christ is risen, and the work's already done. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise Him. Praise the Lord. For our God in heaven's praise. Praise the Lord. For the chains that seem to bind serve only to remind you. They drop powerless behind you when you praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Problemas, gloria a Dios, porque en Cristo hay poder, gloria a Dios. Si te sientes ser atado, es solo para recordarte que las cadenas ya son rotas cuando le vas. Cuando le praising the Lord. Amen. He inhabits the praises of his people. Praise God. The greater one lives in us. Amen. You don't really need to worry about what the devil's doing. He's worried about what you're doing. <laughs> Amen. When you exalt the Lord, you knowing, knowing even what he throws at you, Jesus, hey, amen, he turns all that around. In the words of Paul, all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. And if you, just, if you just know that very fact, whatever happens, you can rejoice in the middle of it. In everything, give thanks. Amen. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Praise God. Oh, thank the Lord for his victory. Amen, amen, amen. As you're seated boys are going to help us and, uh, and uh, pass you uh, a little Bible marker, and uh, you can be seated, but slip those in your Bible, and when you open them just, and you see that, just say a prayer for us, would you? Amen. Prayer really works, and uh, missionaries need prayer. We really do. In fact, I, I asked a, a, a missionary that returned to the States to continue his ministry uh, in the U.S., and I asked him, do you miss missions? And he said, you know what I miss the most? He said, the prayer covering that we felt as missionaries from the, 
many churches and many people that pray for us. Amen. And I can tell you we feel that so often. We really do. And uh, one time in, in El Salvador, uh, well, the fighting had broken out all over the country. It was an all-out offensive by the, by the rebel movement to, to just kind of a last-ditch effort in 1989. And, uh, we had people from other parts of the city uh, in our home with us. They had to flee their homes, and, and uh, about 11 days into that fighting, the, we woke up early in the morning to gunshots and realized we were behind enemy lines and we hadn't moved. But the rebel troops had come in, taken over our area. They were in the house next door to us and, and uh, the fighting continued throughout the day as, as the, the, uh, grill, the government troops were trying to uh, fight their way in and, and liberate us. And so it was pretty intense. I mean, there was, we had grenade blow up on our driveway just 20 feet from behind our vehicle and uh, more than 40 bullet holes in our front gate. Bullets had come through the windows and, and lodged in some of the doors. I mean, it was, it was a pretty intense time. And at 5 p.m., they came to evacuate us, and they told us that uh, we would have to run five blocks through the gunfire to the van that was, couldn't come any closer than that to, uh, to take us to a safer part of town. Now, that didn't sound like it was a very good idea to me. We were, by that time, feeling a little bit safe, you know, in the area where we were hiding and, and uh, the only area in our home that had uh, concrete above it uh, overhead to keep us safe during the heavy strafing that was going on. And it was an all-out war zone. But at 5 p.m., we huddled in that gate and uh, we prayed and made that flight through the streets and about took us almost an hour to get to a safe part of town just before curfew that night and into a hotel uh, that didn't have any rooms. <laughs> but uh, there, 10 of us huddled into a room where a re news reporter didn't make it back and they kind of cleaned it out and, and uh, made it available to us. And, and uh, two days later, we arrived in the States to sit the situation out for about six weeks. And, um, the, a pastor friend had found out that I was in in uh, in the states, and so he asked me to come preach that weekend. And so I went. When I walked in the church that Sunday morning, through the through the back, uh, one of the elderly sisters in that church, whom we'd known for a long time, saw us, saw me, and she said, "Oh, you're the show altar." She said, "I had no idea you were going to be here." And I said, "Well, sister, I didn't either." <laughs> and. Uh, she said, I, I've had such a burden for you for the last few weeks. And in fact, the other day, I just had to drop everything and get down and pray for you for about an hour until that burden lifted. And I said, sister, do you, do you know when that was? She said, I know exactly when it was. She said, it was 5 p.m. on Tuesday. The very hour we were, the very moment we were standing in our gate, huddled, praying, asking God's safekeeping hand. And all the while we were in those streets, that little sister was down praying for us, not knowing anything, but praying because of the burden of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for people like you who pray for your missionaries. Amen. You know, I think the moral of that story is if, if God wakes you up in the middle of the night to pray for your missionary, please don't roll back over and go back to sleep. <laughs> Amen. You never know what they might be going through. Amen. And I can tell you that prayer works. It really does work. Amen. And there is a, there is a revival going on around the world. You are very much a part of it because it's a team effort. It's not, not a one-man show. We can't do it alone. It takes not just giving and sending, but it takes a whole lot of praying as well. And it, as a team, we are, we, thank God, you know, the theme of, uh, of our mission and our church is the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. Thank God that we can all be involved. And so when we get to heaven, we're all going to reap the benefits. Amen. 
Amen. We want to just take you with us by video to uh, a few places, some of the largest works. And since we, we get the privilege of traveling around the world, we're going to share a little bit of that with you tonight and to let you just see uh, the church in action. Amen. Now, Jesus said that the gospel of the kingdom, the final sign of the end, would be that this gospel would be preached among every nation. And it was in 1946 our mission was formed after the merger with only 47 missionaries working in nine nations and only 22% of the church on foreign soil at that time. But that's grown to 313 missionaries, 366 aimers, and uh, 50 regional missionaries. Those are men sent from other nations now as missionaries. And we're working together in 206 nations outside of North America. And right now, 81% of the United Pentecostal Church is outside of North America. Amen. So it's working. Your investment is paying off. Amen. And that percentage actually grows um, every year as we get close to the demographics of the world. But let's... Look at the church in the end time. Venezuela is our largest work in Latin America, over 200,000 members in, in this nation. And uh, they're under an oppressive government, but you can tell that they take their liberty as an outdoor crusade effort in a, a small town in eastern uh, part of the country. But look at this guy, no arms and no legs, worshiping with all of his might. Amen. I don't think we have an excuse. Papua New Guinea It's one of our larger works in the, in the Pacific region. And uh, they, they've been sitting on the grass. They don't have chairs like you have just outside. And it started to rain. And what do they do? Get up and dance in the rain. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And they, they won't even let you get done preaching, Brother Carnahan. Uh, and they just rush that altar and uh, begin to... Sometimes they get so passionate, they rip the grass right out of the ground. And, and, uh, but receive the Holy Ghost. 179 received the Holy Ghost. And then an appeal was made after the altar service for those that needed to be baptized. And, and uh, we, they loaded them on trucks. We went down two miles to the bay and had a mass baptism. 232 baptized in Jesus' name right there in the bay close to midnight. Amen. Amen. About Madagascar. This is the central church in Madagascar. Madagascar is our largest work in the African region and quite a, an amazing work. Three generations of the same missionary family, the Richardson family. And uh, this is just the central church after we preached on a typical Sunday morning. That's the altar service. Wow. We also taught... University students about campus ministry. That's one of our jobs under a missions department, and uh, they represented 50 universities in the nation. How about how about uh, Spain? Even the Europeans say it can't happen in Spain. But look at this. This is the 13th anniversary of the church in Madrid. This local church had over a hundred receive the Holy Ghost in their anniversary services. Amen. Amen. Bolivia, another country under an oppressive government, and uh, but this city cooperative crusade effort in, in Cochabamba, uh, what an exciting time. You can see the people, they don't look oppressed. 28 received the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, the Philippines. This is just one local church in Quezon City, close to the Bible school. And uh, what a what a wonderful church uh, there in Manila, and uh, the Philippines is our largest overseas work, and uh, they are rivaling the size of the mother church here in North America. And uh, if things keep going like they are, they'll pass us up. And but children's ministry, I want to say, is a very vital part of missions work all over the world. <laughs> Boys are the same all over the world, too. <laughs> Amen. They're singing, make me a servant. But... Yeah. 
my wife works with children's ministries, helping them form Sunday school departments. I want to take you right now to a prayer meeting in a church in Chile. Uh, we were just all down praying, and, and I heard this little girl speaking in tongues louder than everyone else. And amazingly, I realized she was speaking in tongues in English. I was understanding her. She just said, come Messiah. said Messiah in three languages. <laughs> she didn't understand a word she was saying. But she was just praying in the spirit. Amen. Let's listen to it again. Bible tells us that the Spirit prays for us according to the will of God. And if it's praying even through children, come the Messiah, we must be close. Your Bible ends with two calls to come. The first one in verse 17 tells us it's the Spirit and the bride say, come, it's a call, an evangelism call. And then Jesus ends it by saying, surely I come quickly. And John responds, even so, come, Lord Jesus. That's the cry of the Spirit out of the hearts of many. And we don't even realize how close we are to the coming of the Lord. Amen. 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 You can pause that and go ahead and stop that. Amen. I can tell you we are very close to Jesus coming. And the, 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 the signs, so many signs, are aligning themselves like never before in the history of the world. The, the alignment of nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 is, it has aligned themselves exactly right down the line against Israel, just like Ezekiel prophesied about so many, uh, over three, nearly 3,000 years ago. And uh, so what amazing things are happening. The world is, is all looking for, for a leader somebody to step on the scene and the major religions all believe that Jesus or the Messiah is coming the Jews are expecting their Messiah in fact they've they've actually named several leaders among them that they thought possibly were their Messiah rabbis who have now died one of them at the, the age of 92 and another one at the age of 108 and uh, both of these rabbis were were keenly used in healings of all kinds and, and uh, very keen. In fact, one of them uh, believed that he would actually meet Messiah himself and wrote his, his letter to his followers as he did and told the Messiah's name. <laughs> and in 2007, they opened the letter and found that his name was Jesus in Hebrew. Yehoshua, and, uh, and since that time, there has been a, a movement, a messianic movement among many of those people and into the thousands, uh, not just in Israel, but in many, many parts of the world. And God is wrapping this thing up. But the Jews as a nation are even waiting for a Messiah, praying for him to show up. And they say, they say that it will be a political leader that will be, bring peace and and that will be the identifying factor for who that they will worship as Messiah. Sad to say, they will be deceived, just like the scripture said. The Muslim world, 
also believes that Jesus is returning as their Messiah. But they believe that again he will come as a political figure, also offering peace and uh, establishing an Islamic world all around the globe. But again, obviously, what they are looking for, they will be deceived. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 of conditions that would be present right before his return in the end of the world. And, and uh, he's responding to some questions after he told them about the destruction of the temple, foretold them that it would happen, that not one stone would be left on another, and they asked him, when, when will these things be? And he gives them some key signs that would take place about the temple's destruction. It happened. It happened in 70 A.D. But he goes on to talk about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. And, uh, but twice in this discourse, he gives strong warning to not be deceived by false Christ and false prophets. How in the world can you know? Here is the guideline. This is the rule. <laughs> this is the ruler by which you've got to measure everything. Amen. If it comes after post-biblical times, if it, if it is not in the book, amen, then you don't need to, need to get, get caught up in it. Praise God. Just stick with the book. Amen. Amen. And thank God that he has put men of God, pastors, uh, in place to help us. Praise God. But Jesus goes on through many signs here and conditions that will happen. He, he gives some conditions that will prelude the end, that would be a sign to us that we are entering into those end times. And one of those is the wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against nation. And he said, but the end is not yet. Did you know the 20th century was a century of wars? Two world wars were fought in the 20th century. There were more battles fought in, in the 20th century than all of the preceding history. And there were more victims of war in that one century than all of history preceding it. And so certainly it should make us very aware Jesus was saying when you see these things I mean the whole world rising up in war uh, then certainly we can say that the end is near but now we've moved on and we're seeing so many things happen right before our very eyes he talked about the earthquakes and pestilence since 1980 the number of earthquakes in the world have has doubled each decade and this decade it is on the move pray for your brothers and sisters in Nepal and uh, they are suffering we have strong churches there they have been under persecution from time to time but uh, there has been a tremendous move of God in that in that nation pray for them amen over a thousand were killed we're waiting word from from our contacts there and to know what's what's going on but uh, I can tell you the final sign, we mentioned this, that Jesus tells us to look for. And really when he says this to the disciples in verse 14, he is, he's, he's really saying, you know, all these things are going to happen, but this is the one you really need to focus on because it involves our involvement. And that is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then the end will come. Well, the last few nations, and every year we, we establish churches in new nations where we have not had a church, but amazingly, we have found churches already established preaching this truth. And in numerous cases, they thought they were the only one and had the responsibility of reaching the entire globe with this message. And so, uh, when they found out that there was a, a worldwide effort and organization uh, they wanted to join and, and get involved amen and uh, what an exciting time that we are living in but let me just say this about the word nations in this verse now when we say nations we think of political boundaries placed by men we kind of think of the globe the map with all the little 
colored countries, you know, different colors so we can see them very easily. But when God says nations, he's not thinking of man-made political boundaries. When he says nations, the word in Greek is the word ethnos. What does that sound like? Sounds like our word ethnic. It is the root word for our word ethnic. And so when, when God says nations, he's talking about tribes. He's talking about cultures. He's talking about families. He, he, he's not talking about just political nations. He's talking about every ethnic group. Amen. That's in Guatemala alone. We had 40 different indigenous tribes that needed the Bible translated into their languages in order to understand the gospel. Just in one country of 12 million people. And so it is in many, many places around the world. But I've got great news. You know what's happening? There's places we can't go. God's sending them to us. He's sending them right here. He's jumbling this whole world up. And it's not just America, it's all over the world. Europe and, and, and many, many other places are, are just, just a, a melting plot, pot of a, a multicultural society. And as he does that, that gives open doors for the gospel to be shared with people that maybe can never be reached. Even through this icy situation, which is very, very grave because as I'm talking, Every five minutes, there's a Christian martyred in a Muslim country. And many of them are your brothers and sisters in Christ that preach this very same gospel. In fact, recently in Syria, uh, ISIS broke into a, a valley of Christian communities that have been there for two millenniums. And those people, those people were evangelized in the first century by John Mark. And, uh, and they have held on to this apostolic doctrine without change for 2,000 years. There are many groups like that. And uh, when they meet us and realize we preach the same doctrine, baptize the same way, amen. There are many of their families in other countries, surrounding countries in our churches, amen. But ISIS broke in, took over 300 of them hostage and, and have been martyring them. And, uh, but through this whole situation, what has happened is there have been some groups in some mountain areas that no one could reach to evangelize. And, and ISIS has stirred up the pot and they've had to flee their mountain homes and flee their places of safety and, and intermingle with uh, people like yourselves, and the gospel is being finally preached to them. So God turns everything around for benefit. And besides all that, he, he sees things so different than we do. We look at that like that's all defeat and the devil's winning, but oh no, God sees it a victory in every life when they step across the threshold of those pearly gates. Amen. Oh, friend. It's, it, it, it's so different in God's way of thinking. Praise God. Praise God. We are there, folks. We are at the end. We are in the finalizing of the end, the revival that's taking place. But let me say this. I don't think God is counting America out. He's invested so much into this nation, and he, is, he has put so much in our foundation. And though Americans seemingly in their prosperity are turning away, from, God's used to that. How many times did Israel do that? Prospered and they turned away from God to false gods that are not gods at all. But he would bring Gentile nations against them and bring them to their knees and they would cry unto him and to God of mercy would respond and restore them and bless them again and defend them. I'm telling you, over and over again, he did that. 
Don't you think that he will do it for America? But he's got to get us down to a place where there's only one way to look. We're so self-sufficient in this nation and, and so blessed beyond measure that people have gotten to the point they think that they're the ones that did it. And so God, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really of the opinion that God's going to shake this thing down because he wants to bring a revival. And when it happens, people are not going to look for flaky Christians. They're not going to look for people who just punch a time clock on Sunday. They're not going to look for people who just, you know, look like they do and don't live a life that's different. They're going to look for people who they know can contact God. Look for people who know they live the life. Look for people who know how to pray and know how to show them the way according to the Word of God. Amen. That day, they're not going to care about names on a door. They're not going to care about, care about, you know, what you call yourselves. They're going to care about somebody they know that walks with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I, I just advise you to start practicing getting ready by just getting you a little Bible study. Study it and start teaching others and sharing it with others. Amen. And get skilled in, in praying people through the Holy Ghost right in their homes. Amen. Or on the job somewhere. Over the, over the lunch bucket. Praise God. And uh, let the word of the Lord begin to work in you until, until you, you, you've sharpened your sword, so to speak. And you've, you've gotten skillful because that's what's going to be needed in that hour. How long away? We don't know. But I, I, I guarantee you God has a plan for America. And it's not taking us back to where we came from, to our prosperous years and comfortable lifestyle. It's going to be bringing people to their knees because he is going to do a quick work across the land, amen, and bring a revival like, like you have never thought possible, amen, right here, amen. He's doing it in other nations. We saw it in the years of, of war in Guatemala and El Salvador and how that people had nowhere else to turn. And God responded. God responded. Praise God. Amen. Now that's a little scary. But if you, if you just lift your eyes to the fields and see that they are white unto harvest, there will come a passion and an excitement. Amen. Knowing, number one, your heavenly home is the most important. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. Praise God. And then souls that are all around him, that Jesus paid the price for. Who is it? Well, there's not one person that is, is counted out by the Lord Jesus. Paul said it this way to Timothy. He said it's, it's God wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Peter said it this way. He said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. John said it this way, he said he's the propitiation for our sins, but not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus just said it, if any man thirst, amen, let him come unto me and drink. Oh, I can tell you that God's got your number. He's already made a way. He wants you to be saved. There's no reason for you not to be if you just Step into his word, amen, and his spirit and let him work in your life. Everything he's promised is for you, amen. I, I, I like the way Peter said it on the day of Pentecost. After he told him just what to do, and I can tell you that the same gospel, the same way Peter answered the question is exactly how it is answered around the world. It doesn't matter what culture, language, what their background is, it's the same. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent. 
Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I love this next part for the promise. It's a promise. It's a gift, and it's promised to us. And since when can God lie? There's one thing God cannot do, and that is he cannot lie. So if he's promised it, you can go to the bank on it. Amen. Praise God. Take a hold of it. In fact, in fact, the word that Peter used, you know, we, we say, we, we read it in our Bibles, you know, receive the gift of, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some reason we've got kind of messed up with that word. And we, we come and, you know, come to the front but we're waiting on God to give. But receive, the last time I checked, is a verb that is action on the recipient's part. And actually, the word in, 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 in the original language means to take. And it's not just, oh, yeah, I'll take one of those. No, it means to get a hold of it, grab it, take it. It's a little violent. Amen. Amen. And that, that's literally what that means. Praise God. And so God's got a gift with your name on it, and he wants you to grab it and take it. The river flows. He said, come and drink. Amen. Amen. There's water in this place. You can come and drink. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's how it works. And then he said, it's unto you and your children and to all that are far off. You know, the last time I checked, we're over 8,000 miles from Jerusalem. I think that's a far off. And that word not only denotes distance, but it also denotes time. And uh, that's 1,985 years ago. Ha! That's a far off, brother. <laughs> Amen. So I think the promise is unto you. You have a right to claim. We're going to go by video once again. And we're, this time we're going to take you around the world with us real quick. And you're going to see people experiencing this wonder, wonderful salvation in so many different places. Some hard places where you think it's impossible. Where maybe you don't even realize there's such a thriving church. But you see, in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Oh, that's okay. What happened? Oh, gloria a Dios. ¿Cuántos hablan en español? Todos ustedes. Amen. Dios le bendiga. Hallelujah. Yo, yo dije que, que la respuesta de, de Pedro a los que le preguntaron que ¿Qué hacemos, hermanos, varones? Era lo mismo que predicamos en todo el mundo. Amén. Arrepentíos y bautícese cada uno de vosotros en el nombre de Jesucristo para perdón de los pecados. Y recibiréis el don del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Por la promesa es para ti y para tus hijos y para todos que están lejos. Amén. Cuánto el Señor llamare. Amén. Aleluya. Y Él está aquí. Gracias al Señor. Amén, amén, amén. ¿Gonna happen? Yeah, it doesn't happen. Thank the Lord. Can I go? Amén. Amén. Dios le bendiga, hermanos. <laughs> Here we go. Praise God. We're going to go to Eastern Europe first. Former Soviet countries. And know that the Lord is at work. Praise God. That Ukraine under the hot breath of the Russian bear right now.
there is an army of worshipers, amen, in this nation and many others, right into Russia. Praise God. They have learned to openly worship the Lord after decades under communism, sitting on their hands, afraid to worship, fear of being arrested. God has set them free. Now, this is the Eastern European Youth Congress. There is one like it in Western Europe, much larger, of course. But these young people represent eight former Soviet countries. They're singing in Russian. This is how we overcome. Some of these young people came without the Holy Ghost. Ten of them received their personal Pentecost speaking in tongues for the first time in their life. Amen. Some were baptized in the swimming pool. Amen. At this place. Now, Swaziland is a tiny country all within the borders of South Africa. This is the central church uh, on a typical Sunday morning. They've had explosive growth reaching into their uh, actually writing to their uh, ruling families. But when this little sister got up to sing her special, she sang a battle cry against the devil and all the sophistication went out the door and we all came out of the pews. <laughs> Amen. In fact, the men got down and began to do their war dance against Satan's kingdom. You guys ought to try that on Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. And after we preached on this typical Sunday morning, people responded in the altar. You see, God can't fill you if you're full of other things. That's why you've got to empty out in repentance. He'll wash you out and prepare you to be a tabernacle and fill you full to overflowing. Pakistan. Now this is a miracle story. Shams are incredible missionaries and uh, the church in Pakistan is very much alive and well. Oh, the devil's mad, but we're glad, amen. And under persecution, sometimes extreme, uh, just a year and a half ago, during the church service, a bomb was exploded in the church building. Over a hundred of your brothers and sisters lost their lives. But the Bible school is key to growth, and one of the greatest revivals in our, in our movement is taking place in Pakistan. Jesus said the harvest is plenteous, but the labor's few, and so the training of workers is always key to solid growth. But it was in 96 that something happened that broke things loose in this nation. And uh, the late evangelist Billy Cole brought his crusade team to the nation. Uh, it was the first time in the history of Pakistan that Christians had been in an open air venue like this in this magnitude. And so the news ca cameras came, there was violence planned against this meeting. They came expecting to see violence, but what they saw, this was off the news that night after the meeting. This Muslim lady, 28 years, her hand paralyzed, God instantly opens her hand right in front of the news cameras, amen. It's put on the evening news in 36 nations that night. And needless to say, the multitudes multiplied the following night to over 30,000 that showed up. And something broke loose. Hundreds of notable miracles took place, amen. And thousands received the Holy Ghost, amen. And annually, Annually, since then, they have had crusades like this in the cricket stadiums, filling public venues in the large cities, and the numbers have, have exploded in growth. And in uh, at 50, 96, they had about 15,000 members after decades of labor, and in the last 16 years, it's grown to, to over... This spring, they announced they have 170,000 members. Amen. It's growing. They have daughter works in Afghanistan. Oh, folks, God! if God can do it in Pakistan, he can do it anywhere in the world. Amen. 
We just need to get a little bold and break out of the walls. Amen. Hit the streets. Praise God. And let this world know there is, there is New Testament Christianity alive and well in Gillette. Praise God. Amen. Well, how about downtown Hong Kong? Now, that's an unlikely place for revival. One of the richest cities in the world and one of the most pagan. But that didn't scare the church. They hit the streets right in downtown. So the questions roll in, and maybe they're in your heart today. What this was was a vacation weekend in the city of Hong Kong. And so the Chinese churches, the Filipino churches, the international church got permits from the city to block the streets right in the center of town and have a one-day street rally. <laughs> Thousands were milling around in the commons area enjoying their day off and heard the gospel preached. Hundreds responded in repentance in the altar. Hundreds of Bible studies were contracted and taught for the following months, and the harvest continued into the hundreds. But on this one day, people repenting, pouring their heart out to God, and right there in downtown Hong Kong, God poured out His Spirit. Amen. Those that could make it, amen, to the church the following day. Thank God. We're baptized. Amen. Jesus' name works in any language. 28 received the Holy Ghost, most of them right on the streets in downtown. How about the banks of the Red Sea in Egypt? This is their youth camp. About 80 young people from the churches came, and uh, the second night, the Spirit of God fell. Two young men received the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and on the third afternoon, we went out to the waters of the Red Sea to baptize them in the name above every name. Amen. Isa Mashiach, amen. <laughs> Jesus, Messiah. Praise God. And this time, the Egyptians come out alive, Brother Carnahan. <laughs> amen. And the Holy Ghost fell, and more responded in repentance and baptism, and the Holy Ghost filled them. Amen. And even some of the adult chaperones responded in, in repentance and baptism and and the Holy Ghost fell on them. And for, in fact, for four hours, we stood in the waters of the Red Sea. One by one, they'd repent, be baptized, pray them through the Holy Ghost, and the next one would respond. Nobody wanted to leave. Amen. As the glory cloud of God's presence overshadowed that water one more time. She spoke in tongues for an hour and a half. Amen. Without stopping. Praise God. Hey, God can do it anywhere. We give him the opportunity. Well, this pastor showed up at the minister's conference we were teaching in northern Peru, and when he heard the message, he said, I've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And we it was a desert place. We found a little water, and uh, there he went down in Jesus' name. And, and uh, that night in the service, he received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues for the first time after 40 years of preaching. Amen. Announcing it on his live radio broadcast. How about Chile? Amen. This was a, an evangelism effort, a crusade effort on the edge of the capital city. And uh, you can see this work is full of young men. Amen. And there were, there were gangs brought. Kids were delivered from drugs. Lives were transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you what. This gospel works anywhere in the world that it's preached. Amen. <clears throat> Lives transformed. And miracles. One of them was this wheelchair left empty by a little lady brought for her first time to a Pentecostal service. She had not walked in three and a half years. But God put strength in her legs and she left her wheelchair behind. <laughs> Amen. 
and she refused to go back and sit in that chair. In fact, she walked home after church that night <laughs> and would not sit down in that chair ever again. Praise God. Hey, Jesus has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you need a healing tonight, he's here. He's the healer. Amen. Call upon his name. Call upon his name and receive your healing. Praise God. Oh. Hey, he's right here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How about children? My wife works with children ministry. It's in many countries we go to. Well, look who the altar workers are in this children's crusade. The children themselves. They have trained their children how to work those altars. And I can tell you, they've turned them loose to let them do it. 14 children received the Holy Ghost, and it was the children that prayed them through. Oh, yes, they can. They're not too young. Amen. Amen. Train them. Turn them loose. They make the greatest evangelists. They really do. This is for you and your children. Africa. Malawi is an extremely poor nation, and they have a high percentage of HIV positive, but Jesus heals of AIDS, folks. He heals of AIDS, and it does not matter how poor or undereducated they might be. Every one of them is worth more than the entire world to the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And it happens just the same there. Well, Zambia. <laughs> what an awesome work. It's been nationalized last September, and uh, Abernathy's are great missionaries. This church was full to max, over 2,000 in this building. The ladies just did their little circle up front, and when they got done, the men took over. <laughs> they, they just went back and forth across the front. I finally had to put the camera down and get down with them. Praise God. Oh, it's the same around the world. If you'll empty yourself out in repentance, proclaiming Him to be your Lord and your God like Thomas did. Amen. I tell you what, He'll come in. He'll fill you back up. He'll prepare you to be his temp temple and tabernacle. And he'll fill you with his presence. Amen. And you, it'll overflow. And when it overflows, amen, you'll speak in another language you've never spoken in before. And even though you don't understand the words, God understands him. Perfect praise. Amen. From your heart to his, unctioned by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. It's the same around the world. It's the birth of water and spirit. Amen. As they cry, Abba, Father, amen. Oh, if you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, God wants to give it to you. He's right here right now. I think it's time to pray. Praise God. It's time to drink until it overflows. It's time to let him fill you from the deepest part. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, his presence is here. Amen. I tell you what we're going to do first right now. I, I think we need to just bow our heads. Repentance is, is not a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. It's a daily walk. It's the foundation that we, we walk on and stand on. Let's bow our heads. And would you, with your own words, the, the, you know, people talk about a confession of faith. Thomas's confession is the greatest. When he fell at his, at his, on his face and said, my Lord and my God. That's what you've got to do. Make him your Lord and your God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. 
we're before you, God. You are here, the Almighty. Oh, Lord Jesus, you who gave your life, your blood for us. Jesus, we surrender to you. Not our way, but yours. Lord, not our will, but your will be done. Lord Jesus, and now, God, we confess our wrongs, our the things that we've done wrong, thoughts, attitudes. Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive those that have wronged us. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray right now. We're confessing you to be our Lord, my Lord, my God. Oh, you are Lord. You are God. But I want you to be my Lord and my God, my Savior and King in my life. Amen. And I want to follow you in your way because I've decided your way is the best. Your way is the best. Amen. Amen, Lord Jesus. So I give you myself. Wash me in your blood. Oh, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me by your hand. Amen. Wash me in water in Jesus' name. Cover me, Lord. Amen. So I can stand in your presence. And now, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Would you just pray that? Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you'd like to step out right now down to this altar and receive it, it comes by calling upon his name. Amen. And we're going to call upon that name. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to call upon that name. Amen. And, and, and pray. Would you maybe, saint of God, if there's somebody near you that needs the Holy Ghost, bring them with you. Amen. Si hay alguien aquí que nunca, nunca has recibido el don del Espíritu Santo, la promesa es tuya. Amén. Y aquí, es, aquí está. Amén. Puede recibirlo en el nombre del Señor Jesús. Venga y beba. Amén. Venga y beba. Gloria a Dios. Aleluya. Dios tiene el don del cielo para ti. Amén. Amén. Aleluya. Jesus. Jesus. Just go ahead and step out. Maybe you've never spoken in tongues. Oh, before in your life. Well, I tell you what, God's gonna, God's gonna give that. Amen. Amen. Now we're gonna ask him one more time. The Lord Jesus, we've come to receive your spirit. I, I want to get the Holy Ghost, Lord. I want your heavenly gift in my life. Amen. And as you're praying, what's going to happen is you're going to feel something move in the pit of your stomach. Mientras están orando, va a sentir la presencia del Señor adentro. Aleluya. No tenga pena hablar lo que Él pone adentro. God's going to put words in your heart and you, it's going to feel like it's coming out of your stomach. It comes from your innermost being. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Amen. And don't be afraid to speak it out. He's not going to force you to speak it. He's going to anoint you with words you don't understand. They're going to sound like baby talk to you. But don't be afraid to speak them. It's God. Amen. Anointed you with that. Speak it out. Amen. As God does. Now, let's pray. Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm here to receive it. I'm here to take it. I'm here to claim my promise. Jesus, you are Lord of my life. You are King. You are Savior. And I declare you as my God. And I worship you, Savior and King. Amen. And I drink in of your presence. Oh, Lord. Oh, I drink in of your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Oh. Es el toque del Espíritu. Amén. Adentro. En lo, lo más profundo. En su interior. Amén. Aleluya. Recibe el don del Espíritu Santo. Recibe el Espíritu Santo. En el nombre del Señor. No tenga pena, hermana. Habla lo que siente. Es el Espíritu. Amén. Aleluya. Rinda todo a Él. Oh, Señor, perdóname. Límpiame. Lávame, Señor. Aleluya, en el nombre del Señor Jesús, haz tu obra en mi corazón. Oh, Jesús, aleluya, Él te ama, Él te ama. Es el toque del Espíritu en tu vida, aleluya. Oh, en el nombre del Señor Jesús. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, right now. Hallelujah. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving. In the name of Jesus, receive you the Holy Ghost. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. With joy, we draw waters from the wells of salvation. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. It is coming up. God, hallelujah. Do your work, Lord. Do your work, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't be afraid to speak it out. It's God giving you that to speak. Praise God. Because unfortunately, He's anointing you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. It's the Spirit of God. Amen. He, he's not going to leave now. When you go home, you can just talk to him and, and, and don't be afraid to speak the Holy Ghost words that he puts inside you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Be unto the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's just celebrate a little bit. There's been several that have received the Holy Ghost. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Praise is be unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Now listen to me. If you spoke in tongues, this is the first time you've ever done that. Praise God. I want you, I want you just to lift your hands right now. That's what's happened to you right here. Yeah, we got one over there. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. I'm here to tell you it happens. That's what it does. The Bible says there's a witness in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Anybody else? Praise God. I'm here to tell you, it's God. That's what he does in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. If you felt like you got a renewing in the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift. If you've received the Holy Ghost before, but you got a renewing in this service right now, why don't you lift your hands right now and give God the glory? Come on. Come on, folks. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is what he said. He said out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water. He spake of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Come on, those of us that have gotten a refreshing of the Holy Ghost, why don't we just lift up our voices again in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Now listen to me one more. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, but you really do believe that you need the Holy Ghost and you want the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift your hand right now. Would you do that? If you have never received the Holy Ghost, but you want the Holy Ghost, you want the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift your hand. Okay, there's one. Anyone else? Anyone else? Praise God. I found out that you can't get it unless you really want it. In Jesus' name. And so what we want to do is we want to have special prayer for you in Jesus' name, that God will help you. Whatever barriers need to come down, whatever type of situation needs to come down in your life right now, I believe that God is going to help you with that in Jesus' name. I understand differences and things of that nature, you know, but I do believe that God wants to leave a strong witness to you in Jesus' name. Some of you, would you gather around Corey right now? And when maybe what you could do is just lay your hands on the person next to you if it's proper right now. And let's pray for people right now. Let's ask God to touch everybody in this room in the name of Jesus. There you go. Come on. I believe that this is the will of God. That's it. This is the will of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. Come on. Our prayers make a difference. It's not like we give them the Holy Ghost, but we can send up faith. We can send up faith in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Let's let it be known right now. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. Come on. That's one of the greatest things that will ever happen to somebody. Right here. Right here. This place. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Come on. That's it. That is it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Oh, I feel that. Come on, there's a surge in this place right now. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes. My, 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 my. 
Oh, yes, Lord God, you take away. Take away every intimidation. Take away every fear. Take away any apprehension or false teaching that has come into place. I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. Let the freshness of your word come and touch our minds. Let the freshness, Lord God, of your spirit come and begin to eliminate all of the apprehension in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. That is Jesus. Oh, come on. I'll tell you, I feel there's still some here. Oh, hallelujah. Still some in this place right now. They're seeking it, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God. Those of us that have the Holy Ghost, can we lift up our hands one more time? Come on, can we just thank the Lord? Jesus, Cayetano, Cayetano, you keep pursuing that. It was all over you in Jesus' name back there. I don't know if you can interpret that for me, but you go ahead. It was all over him in Jesus' name. That's it, my friend. All you got to do is just yield to that in Jesus' name. It is absolutely nothing to be afraid of. I'm telling you, sometimes we just got these things in our minds that just need to go. The Holy Ghost is not the dentist office. It is absolutely the greatest thing on this side of heaven in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Bible says with joy, with joy, you're going to draw out of the wells of salvation. That's what it said we could do in the name of Jesus. That's what it's all about, my friends. The joy of the Lord then becomes your strength in the name of Jesus. And listen to me, there's a close association between joy Joy and faith in Jesus name and this is what God will do he will come into the situation and he will begin to promote that but believe me he's not going to make you do something you don't want to do and so I understand that in Jesus name do we not serve a wonderful God <laughs> we do come on folks there's none like him oh there's none like him Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I tell you, I knew it. Come on. In the name of Jesus. God will do something here. He can do anything. That's it. Come on. I'm telling you, folks, there's nothing like our God. There is a tremendous flow through here right now. In the name of Jesus. You see? Come on. That's it. All we got to do is yield to it. Ah, yes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's it, that's it, Lord God. You, Lord Jesus, are the Almighty. You are the everlasting. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, that's it, that's it. Just touch them, touch them even now as you have been doing all through this service. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I don't speak Spanish, but folks, I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost just interprets that kind of stuff. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, that's right. That's right. Jesus, that's 
Bless the Lord. Praise God. Hey, I wouldn't want anybody just looking at me either. So why don't we just look up towards heaven and begin to praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Come on. God's the one that's going to give it to him, not you and me, in the name of Jesus. We got capable people over there right now that can be witnesses. Let's just keep the praise going up. Come on. Let's just keep that atmosphere of faith just coming into this place in Jesus' name. You want me to play? Is that what you want me to do? In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise us be unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire those songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart. And glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. Because nothing has the power to save your name oh do you believe that hallelujah come on Jesus in your name we pray Jesus in your name we pray come and fill our hearts today Lord give us strength to live for you is a strong and mighty tower your name is a shelter like no other your name let the nations sing it louder nothing has the power to say but your name oh the name of jesus Come on, it's powerful once again. Jesus, in your name we pray. Come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Oh, your name, your name is a strong and mighty tower your name is a shelter like no other your name let the nation sing it louder nothing has the power to say but your name oh 
your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. Nothing has the power to say but your name. your name oh hallelujah hallelujah no other